Chances are, when you heard the noise of a monster you recognized in that intro, you could visualize it perfectly. And that's no accident. Humans have a knack for associating sounds with visuals. Now, I'm no scientist, but I'm pretty sure this developed from early humans figuring out that this meant this, which meant that you were going to become that. Regardless, a huge contributor in making a monster memorable is their cry. In video games and movies, sound reinforces visuals. Ears may play second billing to eyes, but the two have to work together in order to make most media complete. So let's talk about what makes a compelling monster noise, and what better way to do it than by example. I'll be making my own original monster cry so you can see the process in action. But how am I going to decide what monster sound to make, I hear you asking. Well, look no further than everyone's favorite game show, The Wheel of Monsters! Yes, that's right, ladies and germs. You are here with the one and only corn boy whose hair is too long on the special edition of Wheel of Monsters. I'm joined by three wonderful tiny jacks who are all wearing fun hats who will be spinning three wheels to decide the theme of this monster. And what are those wheels? We have the monster adjective wheel, kind of. The monster noun wheel and the combination monster adjective and noun wheel. So tiny jacks, Give us a spin! And the wheels are spinning, they're spinning, here they come. And there you have it! Today's theme for a monster noise is an ice golem ghost. And that concludes this segment of Wheel of Monsters! Back to you, Normal Corn Boy. What does your monster sound like? And why? Before you just go slamming a bunch of snarls and growls together, Really think about what factors influence why your monster sounds the way it does. What's in its biology? Is it big? Is it small? Mammalian? A mech? A lizard person? Maybe it's a hunter and its cry is more subdued. Or perhaps it's an apex predator like a dragon and it can send its booming cry from the skies. Also, you don't have to be a biologist or a physicist to figure this stuff out. Just make assumptions based on what you know from the real world and think logically. Even though these monsters aren't real, it still helps to base our sounds in reality. It'll give you a place to start and help with inspiration. Having a visual really helps, so finding a reference image can really help determine how you craft your sound. For example, I just did a quick Google search and found this ice golem guy, and he's pretty much a perfect fit for what this monster sound is gonna be. So I'm gonna use him as a reference and kind of think about his shape, biology, and design for how I make my sound. Hey, so this is Editing Corn Boy, and I just made a weird discovery. I was looking to find the artist of the ice golem that I used because it's great artwork and I wanted to credit whoever made it, but the only place it appears online is as a reference image on a Minecraft skin. It literally nowhere else. I did a reverse Google search. I looked everywhere, couldn't find it. So if this is your artwork, uh, please message me. I'd love to give you credit for it. Otherwise, I thought this was just a really weird thing that I came across. And uh, anyway, thanks. Back to the action. One of the first things I thought about is how the chunks of ice and rock would be grinding together, maybe creating some sort of super bassy growls. And another component of its design is how, because it's undead, maybe some otherworldly force is holding it together. So some kind of creepy ghostly wail that it lets out, or some pulsating synthesized sound that really shows the force connecting these rocks. I figured my monster would live deep in some snowy isolation, so it could be big, loud, and territorial. A big intimidating hunk of rock with a big intimidating cry. Ah. Here's where it's time to actually make the sound effect. Nothing is truly made in creative isolation, so it's a good idea, as well as visual references, to find some audio references to base your work on. Listen to some monster cries that you love and dissect them. Good sound effects tend to have a beginning, a middle, an end. They always tell a story with how they work. There's some big buildup that leads to the main part of the sound, and then a tail decaying out of the action. Another good idea, going back to that point earlier about using examples from real life, is using animal sounds. 
to make something sound alive, using something living makes a lot of sense. Real sounds add a ton of auditory complexity to your sound effects. And then to really add that spice, that mwah, special sauce, throw in some unreal sounds in there. Synthesizer, instruments, machinery, anything not alive. Incorporate that fantasy and imagination into your sounds. When you mix it all together, you know that it's the best of both worlds. So for my golem, I had a lot of elements I wanted to include. There's some crazy stuff in nature, and one thing I remembered is the sounds of rocks skipping on a frozen lake. I took this sound, and I knew I wanted it to be a main feature of the cry. It sounds both icy and otherworldly, so it's really perfect for the ice and ghost component of this monster. I did a couple different things with this sound. The first is I put it into Harmer, which is an additive synthesizer. I messed around with the playback speed and the overtones to create this kind of impact sound. Also using another instance of Harmer, I reversed the sound and drastically slowed it down and then added an LFO to create this kind of reverse growl. But I knew I needed more meat to the cry than just this sound. So I thought, what about real instruments? What about brass instruments? Again, it'd be something grounded in realism, but not actually alive. The sound of air flowing through an instrument, in my mind at least, could believably be the sound of air or wind flowing through a pile of living rocks. So, great, let's do it. I took a brass section VST, gave it the pitch contour of something yelling, added some reverb and distortion, and it was ready to go. Now that the bulk of the sound and the otherworldly spice was in place, I wanted the energy from something alive to really give the sound that final kick. And now a quick pro tip for sound design. Walruses are your friends. They make an absolutely ridiculous range of noises and are great and have been used for decades for monster sounds. The fact that I was doing something with an ice theme made them an even better fit, so I knew I had to include them. I edited the growl quite a bit to make it not so clearly a walrus and to clean up the poor audio quality of the recording, and I had something pretty good. <laughs> So at this point, I have the sound coming out of the monster's gullet, but there's still something missing. The environmental effects. Beyond just the cry of the monster itself, there are other components that go into making a good monster noise. For example, there's the mechanics of the body moving. Maybe gears grind together in a mech, big ol' wings flap on a dragon, or in my case, ice chunks and rocks grinding together. And then there's also the sound of the actual environment. There's the sound of wind getting blown by, the ground shaking, whoa, or whatever medium your monster is in. And then there's also accessories, weapons, and screams of rage from the player that you might want to think about including. This is the kind of stuff that gives your monster a sense of space. The amount of shake, reverb, or echo sells the size and location of that monster. In my mind, at least, I imagine this dude to be like, you know, 20 feet tall, and I figured that his yells and rompings would cause snow and wind to get blown around the environment. Wind is very easy to make with just filtered white noise, and you can get it to sound a little bit icier with some tasteful distortion. At a very low level in the mix, I included some ice skating sounds. These kind of help sell that ice grinding on ice action and a bit of the mechanics of the body. Beyond that, imagining the monster was in some icy canyon just outside a cave, I added some reverb to give it a sense of space, and it's pretty much ready to go. Sounds meant to accompany a visual shouldn't be presented in isolation. Even if your art skills are super rudimentary, try to have something to look at when you listen to the monster cry. And you don't need to be a 3D modeling nor an animation god to pull this off. A few free assets and a bit of time spent with position keyframes can really help you pull this off. You know, come to think of it, an ice golem ghost sounds a lot like a Pokemon. It really sounds like a combination of Regice and Golurk. I wonder what that would actually look like. Oh. Oh dear. Anyways, once your sound is complete, along with anything else you do in the world of sound design, show it to people. Get some second opinions on it, and don't be afraid to take criticism. Also, it's a good idea to make drafts and just make some crazy alterations on stuff. You never know what might work out, and if you have a save file waiting as your backup, 
there's no risk. For instance, I included the sound of the rock skipping on the frozen lake in the final cry. It was kind of a tail to the sound and faded away after the growl ended. But when I showed it to my friends, they thought it was the sounds of birds chirping, and it didn't really come across. So even though I liked the strangeness of that sound, it wasn't working, so I just cut it. Don't get too attached to specific sounds. Just because you spent a while working on something doesn't mean you need to keep it. Just save it for later and move on. Chances are sometime down the road, you'll get to use it again. Also, even though you're trying to make something out of this world, don't go about it by trying to hit something out of this park. Pow. Oh, that's all. It's a grand slam, baby. Don't go swinging for the fences trying to make something so ridiculous that it blows people's skin off. Those sounds usually end up too complex to really even use. And don't use every single sound design trick in your head. Get a clear idea of what you're going for and use what you need to and not too much more to get that product. After all, if you're making something for media like a video game or a movie, then that sound is gonna have to compete with maybe dialogue, music, and other sound effects. And if you want some final, final touches for your sound effect, you can add some footsteps, some idle noises, soft growling, and other things that will really add that final touch of perfection to your monster cry. And with all that in place, our monster should be done. So, after all that work on our Ice Golem Ghost, let's hear the final result. With monsters, be creative, try something weird, save your project, and just go for it. You never know what's gonna work out in the end. A lot of the coolest sound design techniques and sounds people come up with are made by accident. Try a mix of real and unreal, and even try your hand at doing Foley. Now, if you'll excuse me, my new girlfriend and I are gonna go terrorize some adventurers. Oh, what's that, honey? Oh, you're so right, how could I almost forget? If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and if you want to see more, please subscribe. It helps a lot, and I had a lot of fun making this video, and I'd love to make more content like this. I'm Cornboy, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Bye.